Chrissy. I love that you're back in Maine. Yo, what up, though? Calling for Chrissy T. Oh, it's just Chrissy. What's she going to say next? Chrissy T in the morning, more like Chrissy unfiltered in the morning. Maine's new way to wake up. Chrissy in the morning on Portland's number one hit music station, Q97.9. Yes, Chrissy, you're on the queue. Let's go. Woo! When you back up, when you back up. Chrissy in the morning on Q97.9. Most of you, I feel like, know what Mackworth Island is and or have been there. It's interesting because I don't, I never know what to call it or, well, where the location is, right? Because it's obviously an island and you have to take the bridge to get there, but... On Google Maps, it will say Freeport, and on a different map app, it will say it's still in Portland. I believe it's still in Portland. It kind of feels like that, kind of borders the edge of Freeport. But regardless, either way, there's an island over there, and it is amazing to bring your dog to, okay? So Maverick and I and my mans, we took a little adventure day. It was very cute, and we went over to Mackworth Island. Now, everybody knows, well, maybe you don't, but everybody knows there, it used to be an insane asylum. I think that's how you say the word, but <laughs> it used to be an insane asylum. So there are tons of vacant buildings over there. And I just wanted to go check it out. I wanted to see if it was actually vacant. So we all took a trip over there. You know, my dog's running around, sniffing everything. It's kind of like, it's, there's two paths. Okay. It's, it's kind of like a movie. You either take the, you take the path less traveled and that's where you're going to find all of the buildings that are completely vacant. Uh, you were right. They're still vacant. Don't worry. I made sure I checked. And if you take the other path, you're going down to the water, right? So first we go up to the buildings and it almost felt like we were trespassing in a way. And I don't know if I'm incriminating myself, but we didn't go in the building or break in or do anything crazy like that. We're just walking by looking in the windows. And we noticed that there's a big red V on a piece of paper. It's not a poster. It's not spray paint. It's just a piece of paper. But the V looks like it was just freshly put on there, just freshly painted. And I, I obviously V for Vendetta. That's where my mind goes to first, the movie. And then I'm like, okay, it's V for vacant. But I don't know the story behind it because there were a few cars there that were on the path less traveled, like I said. That had no business being parked the way that they were outside of this building that had nothing inside of it. So it was, it was a little creepy. And, you know, my man and I are sitting here wondering, we're like, oh, my God, do you think that those cars are also from years ago when it became abandoned? But I didn't I didn't think so. There was also a brand new volleyball net, guys, put up. But underneath the vo- volleyball net was it was like weeds over a pavement. It just didn't look like it was taken care of. So there was a lot of weird things happening over there. I definitely wouldn't go over there at nighttime. Um, definitely going to go back and try it again. Because <laughs> I got a little nervous. I got a little nervous. We were looking in and it looks, picture your high school, but now just all of a sudden, boom, in a snap of your fingers, it's vacant. It's That's kind of what it looks like. I mean, there's chairs in there. There's chalkboards in there. Um I, I don't know. I'm doing research right now. I'm actually scrolling through Google as we speak. I am going to write an article on all of the findings that I found yesterday because I'm not going to tell you all of them right now, but that'll probably be up at our Q97.9 app if you want to download that. But I could think of a lot of things that could go into Mackworth Island's vacant building. I feel like it's real estate being wasted. Does anyone else feel like that? Or maybe there's someone listening right now that has more answers because... I am begging for answers at this point. I spent hours on that island yesterday because I just don't get it. I don't understand it. Why is it vacant? Why is it vacant? I know, I understand vacant, why things go vacant. I get that. I'm talking about why is it still vacant though? This is prime real estate over there. It is on an island. Make an Airbnb, you know, make some kind of oasis, make a cool baseball field again. Um, We did find an old baseball field actually, which is kind of why I say that. And that's pretty cool. Imagine a... Imagine a baseball field where, like, Casco Bay Sports can play on, too. You know, like, I play softball for Casco Bay Sports every Wednesday. It would be really cool to have our field on Mackworth Island. And we can make that happen. 
So I got a lot of ideas stirring up here. So if there's anyone listening right now that has any more information on that, please let Let's begin now. Chrissy in the morning on Q97.9. I woke up this morning and I said... I'm not ashamed to tell you this. I have been stalking Salvage Barbecue for so long. Yes, the one right on Congress Street in Portland, Maine. Now that is because I live next to it. I just realized I probably shouldn't have said that, but whatever. I'm never home. I have a few different apartments. Um, but this one, Salvage Barbecue is a staple here in Portland, Maine. And when they closed down, it was detrimental, Okay. And I remember the day, because it's one of my favorite barbecue spots, I remember the day where the sign went up that says, closed for renovations, temporarily closed. And in Portland, you never really know how long that's going to be for, am I right? Our foodie scene, I've written multiple articles about this up on our Q97.9 app. The fact that, you know, a lot of our restaurants, they come and they go. The, The turnover is wild, and you never know. You know, one day your favorite restaurant's here and the next day it's going to be gone. And then maybe the next day it's back, but three doors down. You just never know. Portland is amazing like that. It just keeps you on your feet. (laughs) And I'd like to say that it all started during COVID when things shut down and came back and shut down and came back again. And now we're just rotating. I feel like we're almost like a beer tap, a rotating beer tap, but for food. Does that make sense? (laughs) Like like restaurants are just rotating in this city i you know i learned to like it i learned to like it because you get to you get to try something new all the time it feels like but anyway so back to business salvage barbecue is finally open again today i believe i'm on their instagram right now stalking them i believe they open up at 11 a.m let me check yes 11 a.m no 11 30 11 30 to 10 p.m you'll see me there today <laughs> Oh, man, I can't wait. It looks so good inside. I got to watch the whole process, too, by the way. I got to, like, watch in the window as they were cleaning things and recreating things. And now that I'm talking out loud about this on the radio, it probably sounds creepy. Somebody tag Salvage Barbecue for me. Tag them. Say, Chrissy was talking about you this morning. Maybe, just maybe, we'll develop a partnership. Could you imagine? I would love to be endorsed by Salvage Barbecue. I'd be like, Chrissy in the morning, brought to you by Pulled Ch- Bring it back up. Bring it back up. Chrissy in the morning. On Q97.9. <laughs> I need background music for this one because yesterday, yesterday was a wild day. Because one of my favorite energy drinks, Celsius, much like, much, much like all of yours, because we are on a kick right now, let's all be honest. It's almost like a trend. No matter where you go, you get a Celsius. Oh, you're tired? You get a Celsius. You go to Dunkin' Donuts, you get a Dunkin' Donuts coffee, you get an iced coffee and a Celsius. Which, Dunks does sell orange Celsius, by the way. <laughs> and Chrissy in the Morning does run on Dunkin', one of the many reasons why. And I'll be going there right after I talk about this. However, here's what's going on. There's a lot of caffeine in these energy drinks right now the celsius original line of energy drinks contains 200 milligrams of caffeine so that puts it at the upper end of common energy drinks such as red bull monster rockstar i don't mess with those i really don't it's it's either celsius all the way or that's it but excessive intake of caffeine as we all know can lead to nervousness insomnia increased heart rate and other side effects so here's what my boyfriend did he added up all of the milligrams of caffeine that i take in in a day and he told me that it's basically almost enough for me to be dead <laughs> so i need you guys to be careful when you are ingesting amounts of the celsius because It's got 200 milligrams of caffeine in that little can, okay? And we all should know this, but we do it anyway. We do it anyway because Celsius tastes so good. It takes me about four minutes to get through one. But I'm reading all about it online, and it's just really about understanding your body's tolerance. But here's the thing. If you've been going through insomnia a lot recently, I think you should look into what time you start taking your Celsius or you drink your Celsius. I typically will take it before the gym. But I go to the gym earlier. I go around 12 o'clock-ish, 
you know, the, but that's just because I have a, I have a morning show. I get out of work that early. And I know most of you, some of you go to the gym at five o'clock at night and having a Celsius before the, before you get there will keep you up all night, even though it's just at five o'clock. And that's because of the 200 milligrams of caffeine, even though you might be one of those persons that's like, oh no, I can drink, I, I could drink a whole cup of coffee right before bed and, and pass out and be just fine. It's real. It's real. Also, I linked up my Apple Watch with my heart rate just to watch what's going on and how much caffeine I take in during the day. But anyway, this isn't a health class. I'll let you go. Q97.9. Portland's number one hit music station. This is WJBQ in the morning on Q97.9. <laughs> okay, I think this is one of the funniest topics ever. I love hearing what you guys substitute for your naughty biscotti words, which are swear words. <laughs> now, for me, I, I grew up with my mom always saying fudge. She's like, ah, oh, fudge. And the best part about the word fudge is the adrenaline behind it, because right in the beginning, you say fudge, and you don't know where it's going. You're like, oh, my God, are you are you finishing that, that word, or are you going to stick to it? And and be good, and it's just going to be fudge. I mean, it's it's so funny to me every time. So my question to you is, and I want to find the funniest alternative swear word that you have made up maybe around your kids or in a classroom or in a work setting. We all make up that alternative word. For me, I use the word Pikachu a lot. And if you personally know me and you're listening right now, you're like, yes, yeah, she really does. Pikachu? There's something about, about Pikachu that makes me laugh so hard, so... I'll be like, oh, my God, you little Pikachu. Pika. I don't know why, but it just stuck. It just stuck. So what is your alternative swear word? Good morning. I say Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> I, teach, I, teach, I teach kindergarten, so I can't say Jiminy Cricket. Oh, wait, I don't know. can't say that. I say Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I can't say it in my kindergarten classroom, but I'll say it on Chrissy in the morning. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You almost got us both in trouble there, my little cricket queen. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so close. Okay. No, no, you're fine. So can you use it in a sentence for me? Like, you guys, like, you guys got to keep your shirts on. Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> you guys can't be naked in the classroom. Jiminy Cricket. You can't. You can't. Jiminy Cricket, you guys. I hate that rule. I hate it so much. I also have to wear clothes in the workplace. <laughs> oh. I know. So, things you say in a kindergarten classroom that you don't say at other people's jobs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that so much. Do you have another one? Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, uh, uh, fluff and utter. I don't know. <laughs> fluff and utter. I love that one. Uh, fluff and utter. Like, See, you had it. Oh, uh, like, fluff and like, utter. You've got this. If, it doesn't, if the radio career doesn't work out, you can be a kindergarten teacher. you got that going for you. Oh, I can promise you right now, girlfriend, I could never be a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Chrissy in the morning. All right, emergency. Emergency press conference. Emergency press conference. Emergency press conference. That's an emergency press conference. All right, emergency press conference. On Q97.9. Which is made possible by Town & Country Federal Credit Union. Good morning. My name is Monica. Monica, we're talking about alternative swear words. What you got for me? I, I've used that nabbit before. And <laughs> I've used, oh, shoot, my daughter... <laughs> She is, um, she's almost seven, and so she started to sort of learn that if she hears it, then she can say it, <laughs> which isn't really the way it should go. But her word is yeet. Like, every time I almost say a swear word, she says yeet. She so says yeet? become my new thing. Yeet, yeah. <laughs> can you use that in a sentence, please? Like, like, oh, yeet, I dropped the glass. Now, that's interesting because... I, I can't really keep up with this, this Gen Z or X, X, Y, whatever freaking generation we are. But I always yeah. hear the 20 something year olds in our office. They always say, I yeeted myself off the building or like I, I yeeted my water bottle across the room. So there's, there's so many different meanings to that word. I know. I don't have the, I don't know the exact definition. I bet, um, Urban Dictionary could tell us. Yeah, I'm going to do it right, right now. I'm going to do it right now. Live, okay. live here in the flesh. UrbanDictionary.com. I'm typing. Yep. Urban. What was that? What is that? Sorry, I'm on the turnpike. That was the the, the, the rumble strip. You went over your you went over the, the rumble strip because you're talking to me. You better get you better pull over. No. You better yeet your car to the side of the road, girl. <laughs> no, 
no, no, no. There's cones, and so they had me go to the side, and it's obviously like right at the side where it is. <laughs> so like right now, I'm balancing between two wheels. Okay, ready? UrbanDictionary.com okay, yeah. says the definition of yeet is to discard an item at a high velocity. I mean velocity. Sorry, dyslexic. Okay. So here's the sentence. Alex finishes his soda and proceeds to yeet his empty can into the trash bin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I like the That's way your right. daughter says it first. Yeah. She just uses it as a replacement. As, a, as a naughty biscotti <laughs> word. I love it. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, let's keep this going. What do you and your family use as a replacement word for a naughty word? I'm not going to lie. Some of y'all are scaring me with these. You're so good at it that it sounds so real. I got my hand hovering over the bleep button. Let's begin now. Chrissy in the morning on Q97.9. I woke up this morning and I said... Uh, I don't know why I do this to myself with these topics, but here we are. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Chrissy. I'm calling in with a non-swear swear word. My girl, go ahead and get it. Okay, so my go-to is oh French toast. Uh, you okay? French toast always scares me too. You ever you ever see that commercial where it's you lint liquor? Yes. And he's what the <laughs> French toast? Yep. I use it in so many Terrifying. ways. So it's like uh French toast or what the French toast or <laughs> French toast like. And then um, I don't know if you've seen that GIF on Microsoft Teams where it shakes. So once I saw that, oh, I yeah. say shaky French toast <laughs> if it's really bad. I, I want you to know that every time you said French toast, my hand is hovering over this beep button. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, no, I asked for it. I asked for it. That's what I do. I gaslight myself. I ask for trouble, and then I get upset when I put myself in the middle of it. <laughs> Q97.9, Good morning. Good morning. So I have a alternative word myself. Go ahead. It's son of a biscuit. Oh, I got so scared. <laughs> it's so close. It's so good. It's so close. It's like a hair away. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I looked at in eighth grade. Some girl in my art class said it. The teacher gave her detention because she used substituting a bad word. But I used the epicent. Son of a biscuit. Oh, you did it again. You keep waking me up. <laughs> That is, Have a good day. That is so close that it's like that was you. you that that you. Uh, my job was almost in your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good day. Thank you. You too, honey. Bye. Wait, this one commercial literally has every single one of those swear words. They all just said in one. Listen. You son of a biscuit-eating bulldog. <gasps> what the French toast? Do you think I wouldn't find out about your little doo-doo head cootie queen? Who are you calling a cootie queen, you lint liquor? Pickle you. It's Chrissy in the morning. Culture shock on Q97.9. Which is brought to you by Lee Auto Mall. My guys over there. Good morning. I'm sweating from all these almost swear words. Shouldn't be, it's only 64. But people are almost swearing on my show. I got a good one for you. Hit me. Goose feather down. What the heck is, is that substitute? What, what What even is that? Actually, you know what? No, I'm I'm too scared of this one. I'm going to hang up on you. Q97.9, good morning. Good morning, how are you? Uh, you know, sweating. Just sweating. <laughs> Get a little nervous there, did you? I'm very nervous. If I didn't get Botox in my armpits, courtesy of Megan Co., then I would be, my hyperhidrosis would still be going nuts right now. Oh, man. Girl, you gotta calm down. I don't know how. Words for swears. <laughs> what did you say? Just replacement words for swears. They're not the real deal. I know, but what if somebody slips and then my whole job goes out the window? <laughs> Give me a give me an alternative swear word. I feel like you got a good one. Um, uh, well, you got mother trucker. Is yeah, a good one. It's always but. scary. <laughs> it's always scary. It's always scary. Instead of saying the s word, I'm like shish kebab. No, oh, that's scary too. Close, but not a swear. Holy shish kebab! Oh my god! <laughs> <sighs> that's incredible so for you. It's incredibly scary Listen, for my job. Like, I don't have any children at home, so I kind of just let it fly off the handle. But when I'm around my grandmother, yeah. I don't swear around her. So I kind of yeah. try to find replacements when I'm around her. Yeah, can you do the shish kebab one again? It's kind of waking me up. Oh, shish kebab. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. I love you. You're so funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love you, too. I, I can't feel my armpits right now because I have 120 units of Botox in them, but they want to sweat so bad. <laughs> They're 
a couple of napkins under there. You'll be fine. I know. I used to stuff my bra in high school, and, I, and then I used to use those napkins underneath my armpit. Hey, <laughs> I'll admit it. Re- rinse, reuse, recycle. I like it. <laughs> Whatever works. <laughs> You son of a biscuit-eating bulldog. What the French toast? Do you think I wouldn't find no. out about your little doo-doo head cootie queen? Who are you calling a cootie queen, you lint liquor? Pickle you, come grow. Bring you back up, bring you back up. Chrissy in the morning on Q97.9. And I, I love the fact that she's allowing me to do this right now. This is a little bit of morning show inception. We've got a sister station in Augusta called 92 The Moose and... One of the co-hosts of the morning show, Lizzie, who's also one of my very good friends, has decided to agree to come on my show right now in the middle of her show to talk about Maine Central Idol. Are you there, girl? Are we doing this right? Let's hit the button. Let's see. Hi. Hi, Mama. So this is exciting for me because I had so many listeners calling me last week and the week before telling me how they were going to go out and audition for Maine American Idol and then I look on your story, and there you are hosting it. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Well, I'm pre-host. I'm a pre-host, so I kick pre-host. off the entire night by welcoming everyone and the contestants, and then also auctioning off a seat to be a judge oh, for that night. That is so cool. Okay, yeah. so who won? Do you remember who won yesterday to be a judge? Uh, I forget her name, but they bid four hundred dollars. <laughs> oh my god! So this thing is serious. I- Oh, my God, yes. I mean, the winner gets $10,000 donated from Cork Ford for this year and next year. So they're wow. locked in ten grand to the winner. It's huge. Okay, I didn't know there was ten grand here. Suddenly, I'm going to go take some singing lessons. <laughs> I know, I know. It, they're, they're, Central Maine Idol is making it rain in Hollowell uh, with tons of dead presidents. That's what I call money. Uh, but anyway, I go up and I pre-host. I kick off the night. I wore a dress from Kohl's. I had a fun time. Talked about 92 Moose, of course. Yes. Um, and then welcomed all the contestants and introduced the host host. His name is Brad Wallace, and he's also a really amazing singer. So there's so many cool and talented people in this really artsy and unique town in Maine, you know? Yeah, I hear Hollowell is so beautiful. It's gorgeous, and they're so inclusive, and they got the flags flying everywhere because it's Pride Month. Yes. But what's really neat is that Central Maine Idol is bigger than ever this year because last year we had a contestant who we all know, Julia Ganyan, yes. that went straight up and skyrocketed to American Idol. So Central Maine Idol is on the map right now, and it's the place to be, and it's the competition to go and watch. Is this a this is like an all summer thing, right, girl? It's every Monday at five o'clock. It starts off at five o'clock, so make sure you get there a little bit early. They have drinks, they have food, eight dollar coconut margaritas that are delicious. Um, but yeah, it starts off every Monday night uh, at the Corey Tap Room in Hollowell. Yeah, so fine. That's right up your alley. So, Lizzie, girl, are you hosting it every Monday? Like you're the reoccurring host. Yes, every Monday night, I'm the pre-host. So I so go cool. up, I kick it off, I hype up everyone, get them all super excited and stoked for the night. Do you know what I love? One of the seats. Do you know what I love <laughs> about this whole thing, Lizzie, is the fact that there's not only just a host. No, no, this this is Maine. So we no. do we do the pre-game, we do the pre-host <laughs> to the host, and then we get to the activity. <laughs> I kind of gave, I came up with the pre-host, like, title because last year they were like, Lizzie, why don't you come up and host, introduce the host? And I was like, like... I didn't like even know that was a thing. Kind of, kind of thing? I know. Yeah. It was like a pre-date before the date. Yeah, like, like a the, like a pre-game. That warms you up. Yeah, a yeah. pre-game before the real thing. I'd be like, I'm offended. I'm offended. I'm the hatchback in the parking lot with the beer. You are the pickle. the actual game. Yeah, you're the pickle juice. <laughs> To the pickleback shot. <laughs> Own it. <laughs> you know what? I'm happy to do it. It's cool because I slide in, do my little pre-hosting, and slide out because I have to be up so early. And it's a pretty, yeah. you know, it goes on for a few hours. There's a lot of contestants. Each week they will kick, I don't want to say kick off, but yeah, they kick off two contestants. I'm and still, so it moves, I'm just know. over here still stuck on the fact that you thought it was so normal to just be like, I slide in and then I slide out. And I'm like, that's exactly what she said. Like, what do you mean? Like, <laughs>
<laughs> it's just really perfect for me. You know, yeah, the I pre warm host, everybody out. The pre-host slides in. <laughs> she slides right out. <laughs> She'll do it again every Monday. If there's no commitment. <laughs> no, perfect. No. And I talk about how sexy Brad Wallace looks in his beige on beige on beige suit. Yeah. So the host is awesome. He's in a band too. I, it's Ellis Falls, and oh, cool. and he wears the coolest like suits. And so last night he wore beige on beige on beige. So I ended up talking about that a lot. So I just make everyone laugh a little bit before everything gets real serious and competitive. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm the pre host. I'm the <laughs> I'm the I'm the Subaru with all the beer before the Yankees game starts. Yeah, yeah. We have to stop talking about pre hosts because I'm going to go in a direction that's going to get me fired. So. <laughs> Oh, my God, me too. <laughs> We're going to get fined. Okay, Lizzie, you are on air over on your station. I got to jump back on air as well on my station. Thank you for the thank That's you for right. the crossover. Thank you for the, what's that word called? Word, word. Right. I yes, can't, I, can't. I know what you're talking about, but I can't think of it either. Yes, yes. Two girls, <laughs> one microphone. I love you, girl. Inception, that's the word. Morning show inception. <laughs> Let's begin now. Chrissy in the morning. On Q97.9. I woke up this morning and I said... All right, I got to address it. I got to address it. Yes, I did just say something that now the Swifties are mad at me about. You're all mad. You're all mad. But I'm just going to tell you this. It is just facts. It's facts. Sent to my email. We get facts about artists. And guess what? Morgan Wallen's better than her. You heard it here first. Tell your friends. You can yell at me. Morgan Wallen is better than Taylor Swift. He just beat Taylor for most weeks at number one on Billboard's Hot 100 chart. So I'm going to stop playing Taylor, and we're going to start playing Morgan Wallen in the background. But again, this is kind of crazy, guys. Morgan Wallen beats Taylor Swift. That's a sentence you don't typically hear a lot. For most weeks at number one on Billboard's Hot 100 chart. And I'm assuming... I'm assuming it's because the song that I just played you called I Had Some Help with Post Malone on it. Post Malone wants to go country on all of us. So does Beyonce. Everyone's leaving us for country. We're still going to play it, though. It's like pop country. But that is a wild sentence. Morgan Wallen throws throws a chair off a, off a balcony and suddenly is number one beating Taylor Swift. It's incredible how that works. Morgan Wallen... Do you remember back in, like, 2019, he is king of just doing astronomically wild publicity stunts and getting canceled for about a day. And then the next day, he throws a single out, and everybody makes him number one again. (laughs) And that, my friends, is why he is better than Taylor Swift. Everybody still hates Diddy, and Travis Kelsey, I think, looks like a tool. Chrissy in the morning on Q97.9. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Chrissy. I'm calling in with a non-swear swear word. My girl, go ahead and get it. Okay, so my go-to is, oh, French toast. Uh, you Okay, French toast always scares me, too. You ever you ever see that commercial where it's, you lint liquor? Yes. And he's, what the <laughs> French toast? Yep. I use it in so many ways, though. It's like, uh, French toast, or what the French toast, or <laughs> French toast, like... And then um, I don't know if you've seen that GIF on Microsoft Teams where it shakes. So once I saw that, I say shaky French toast if it's really bad. I I want you to know that every time you said French toast, my hand is hovering over this beep button. (laughs) I'm I'm so sorry. No, no, I asked for it. I asked for it. That's what I do. I gaslight myself. I ask for trouble, and then I get upset when I put myself in the middle of it. (laughs) Q97.9, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So I have a alternative word myself. Go ahead. It's hey, son of a biscuit. Oh, I got so scared. <laughs> it's so close. It's so good. It's so close. It's like a hair away. <laughs> I know. I looked at in eighth grade. Some girl in my art class said it. The teacher gave her detention because she used substituting a bad word. But I used the epithet, son of a biscuit. Oh, you did it again. You keep waking me up. <laughs> That is, Have a good day. That is so close that it's like that was you. you that that you. Uh, my job was almost in your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good day. Thank you. You too, honey. Bye. 
Wait, this one commercial literally has every single one of those swear words they all just said in one. Listen. Son of a biscuit-eating bulldog. What the French toast? Do you think I wouldn't find out about your little doo-doo head cootie queen? Who are you calling a cootie queen, you lint liquor? It's all you. Bring your back up. Bring your back up. Chrissy in the morning on Q97.9. Good morning. I'm sweating from all these almost swear words. Shouldn't be. It's only 64. But people are almost swearing on my show. I got a good one for you. Hit me. Goose feather down. What the heck is, is that substitute? What, what what even is that? Actually, you know what? No, I'm I'm too scared of this one. I'm going to hang up on you. Q97.9, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Uh, you know, sweating. Just sweating. <laughs> You're a little nervous there, did you? I'm very nervous. If I didn't get Botox in my armpits, courtesy of Megan Co., then I would be, oh. my hyperhidrosis would still be going nuts right now. Oh, man. Girl, you gotta calm down. I don't know how. Just words for swears. <laughs> what did you say? Just replacement words for swears. They're not the real deal. I know, but what if somebody slips and then my whole job goes out the window? <laughs> give me a, give me an alternative swear word. I feel like you got a good one. Um... Uh, well, you got Mother Trucker. It's yeah. a good one. It's always but... scary. <laughs> it's always scary. It's always scary. Instead of saying the S word, I'm like, shish kebab. No, oh, that's scary too. Close, but not a swear. Holy shish kebab. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. Not for you. <laughs> Unless you want, like, I don't have any children at home, so I kind of just let it fly off the handle. But when I'm around my grandmother, yeah. I don't swear around her. So I kind of try to find replacements when I'm around her. Yeah, can you do the shish kebab one again? It's kind of waking me up. Oh, shish kebab. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. I love you. You're so funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love you, too. I, I can't feel my armpits right now because I have 120 units of Botox in them, but they want to sweat so bad. <laughs> Throw a couple of napkins under there. You'll be fine. I know. I used to stuff my bra in high school, and, I, and then I used to use those napkins underneath my armpit. <laughs> hey, re rinse, reuse, recycle. I like it. <laughs> Whatever works. <laughs> Chrissy in the morning on Q97.9. All right, before we jump out of here for the day, one last call, alternative swear words. This has been one of my favorite shows. Good morning. My name's Monica. Monica, we're talking about alternative swear words. What you got for me? I've, I've used that nabbit before, and <laughs> I've used, oh, shoot, my daughter, <laughs> she is, um, she's almost seven, and, and so she started to sort of learn that if she hears it, then she can say it, <laughs> which isn't really the way it should go. But her word is yeet. Like, every time I almost say a swear word, she says yeet. She so says yeet? So become my new thing. Yeet, yeah. <laughs> Can you use that in a sentence, please? Like, like oh, yeet, I dropped the glass. Now, that's interesting because I, I can't really keep up with this, this Gen Z or X, XY, whatever freaking generation we are, but... I always yeah. hear the 20-something-year-olds in our office, they always say, I yeeted myself off the building, or like, I I yeeted my water bottle across the room. So there's there's so many different meanings to that word. I know. I don't have the, I don't know the exact definition. I bet um, Urban Dictionary could tell us. Yeah, I'm going to do it right, right now. I'm going to do it right now. Live, okay. live here in the flesh. UrbanDictionary.com. Yep. Yeah. Urban. <laughs> what was that? What is that? Sorry, I'm on the turnpike. That was the the the, the rumble strip. You went over. You went over the rumble strip because you're talking to me. You better get. You better pull over. No. You better yeet your car to the side of the road, girl. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's cones, and so they have me go to the side, and it's obviously like right at the side where it is. So like right now, I'm balancing between two wheels. Okay, ready? Bye. UrbanDictionary.com okay. yeah. says the definition of yeet is. To discard an item at a high velocity. I mean velocity. Sorry, dyslexic. Okay. So here's the sentence. Alex finishes his soda and proceeds to yeet his empty can into the trash bin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I like the That's way your right. daughter says it first. <laughs> yeah. She just uses it as a replacement. As, an, as a naughty biscotti word. I love it. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Let's keep this going. What do you and your family use as a replacement word for a naughty word? 
I'm not going to lie. Some of y'all are scaring me with these. You're, you're so good at it that it sounds so real. I got my hand hovering over the bleep button. <laughs> but let's do this. Um, we'll, we'll, I'll get the last ones in at 6 a.m. tomorrow on the show when I come back. And uh, you can you can text me all of your answers to our Q97.9 app. Or you can DM me. I'm Chrissy T Radio. I will leave you with this.